Hello and welcome to vlog number 16. It's sunny, spring has arrived and there's blue sky. There's some grey clouds but we're ignoring those and we're out on the allotment today and we've brought a couple of chickens with us to help clear the brassica cage of any weeds or bugs or anything that are going on in there. And um, I've got my younger two children here and they're helping with loads of jobs as well. So yeah, amazing to be here. But now I'm here, I found loads of jobs that I'm thinking I need to do. Um, the sunshine's making me want to put up my bean frame, which is a little bit early, but the plot always looks so much nicer when there's a few structures there waiting for the beans to climb and the squash. So I think I might build that today. And I've also got loads and loads of seeds to sow. So I'm going to be doing some of those as well. And weeding. The weeds have arrived. So my main weeds here on the allotment are Creeping Buttercup. Um, these little things, I can never remember their name. I'll just pull some out here for you. These, I can never remember what they're called, but I have millions of those, but they are easy to pull up. So that's, that's a win. And this year, I'm sure I'll find one if I just look around. Yes. Sycamore seedlings. <laughs> I have absolutely thousands of them so i pulled up loads and loads last time and i'll be pulling up even more today so yes weeding seed sowing bean frames and chickens thanks for watching so this year more than any other year um, I've noticed a huge number of sycamore seedlings. We don't actually have a sycamore tree really, really close to the plot. Um, so I assume it's because we had the really high winds and they've blown in from trees that are nearby. Um, we do have a sycamore tree at home and we often have the seedlings, but not in the quantity that we've had this year. So perhaps a combination of a really good year last year for sycamore trees and maybe they produced a vast quantity of seeds and the high winds have meant that we just have a lot. So a lot of our time at the plot at the minute is pulling out seedlings. Um, these little sapling trees are literally everywhere. This is just from two beds that I've pulled out. I still have to deal with all of the ones in the paths. So to help us with some of this in the brassica cage this week, we've left some of the chickens back at home having snacks because we're still in chicken lockdown and we've brought two of the girls with us to the allotment. So this is Alice and Doris and they've come to help to kind of pull out a lot of the weeds in our brassica cage and also they can fertilise the ground a bit while they're in there and they'll scratch it up a little bit. Because we're in chicken lockdown, chickens need to be kept in a covered space at all times that can't be accessed by wild birds. Now, this area has been covered now for a, a good few weeks. Um, so there's not been any wild birds on this ground for a good while. And obviously, none can get in today. So they're quite safe in here. So it's quite nice for them to just be able to get out because they've been in now in their run at home since November, beginning of November. And last year they weren't allowed out till May. So it's literally half the year. So these two are really enjoying themselves today, having a little break, a little holiday away from the chicken coop um, and a bit of a change in the diet for a while and have some lovely greens. I'm not really sure how safe my Comfrey is there in the corner, but we'll see. They've got plenty more to go on, so hopefully they'll get rid of all the slugs, all these little tree saplings, but I think that Comfrey might get a little bit of a battering as well. One of my jobs today is to get some more brassicas sown. I'm going to be sowing some purple sprouting broccoli, um, some green sprouting broccoli, some kale. I've got a couple of Taunton Dean kales that are doing really well from cuttings now. So I'm excited to get those back on the plot because we're really missing that at the moment after we lost them all in the winter. And um, we did notice that I had a hole in the Nebraska cage. So my daughter's very cleverly kind of hand sewn it together with some string. 
Well done, her. This side of the plot is starting to look a little bit better. These back beds need a bit of attention. The rhubarb's looking lovely. And I need to weed some more of these front beds too. I'm going to finish mulching this bed today because I realised I had one more bag of the Rocket Grow mulch. So I'm going to just finish mulching that. So that's all ready for planting then. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to put in that bed yet. I keep changing my mind. Um, we'll see. We'll see how my seedlings grow. I'll see what I've got a lot of and what needs to go where. Imogen's been planning out her patch as well and she's going to move a few things around to make it just as she wants it this year. This one's got loads of soil. This one's like the roots have all come down here. <sighs> this was one plant, right? Yeah. And then it had this one and then this one had that baby and then this one had this baby. <laughs> it's like a constant... Get my... Dig a hole here. I'll put, I'll put, um, should put that side of that Yeah, side. they'll be nice at the corner and Baby. then they might. Oh. <laughs> they might be nice in this corner and then they can spill over a bit. Okay, We're starting to see some more bees on the plot which is really lovely. Each year I grow more and more flowers to try and attract them in. Um, starting the season with these primroses which I'm kind of dividing the clumps of each year and spreading them around so I get more and more of those. And then I'm also sowing lots of flowers, particularly edible flowers, because then the multi-purpose, but ones that the bees will love, like borage and calendula. And hopefully the bees will have a great time. I'll enjoy the flowers and it'll also help pollinate all my other veggies. Last year, Immy and I took lots of cuttings from my fruit bushes when they needed pruning and loads and loads of them took, like we had 90 odd percent success rate. So I'm now getting Imogen to pot them up um, into these bigger pots so they can get more established. We've got a lot of gooseberries, quite a lot of black currants and a few red currants as well. So hopefully I'll be able to find lots of places that I can grow them. They might not end up on the plot. I think they might be ending up at home in our little woodland area and hopefully we'll get more fruit harvests.
I'm trying to develop this little area at the side of the polytunnel into a nice place to sit and take in the allotment. I do have a lovely shed and there's a lovely place to sit on the veranda of that at the back of the, po of the polytunnel. Um, and it looks onto the river and I can watch the children on the little swings and things and it's great. But it would be really nice to have a space at the front of the allotment in the sunshine where I can look over all my beds and my veggies growing. So my plan is to make this area a place where I can put some of the um, things that I'm potting on at the side here that can be outside on the table, but also to surround the, the beds around here, to surround myself with lots of climbing plants. So today I'm making a bean frame so the, the beans, the runner beans, the climbing French beans can run up this and make a beautiful screen that will hide the compost heap behind. Um, and hopefully we'll also produce loads of beans because we love those and they store really well in the freezer. So I won't grow as many as I can this year. I'm growing a mixture of colours as well. I've got purple beans, green beans, yellow beans. So hopefully it'll be really pretty. Um, I'm only going to be growing them on this one side because they do need a lot of sun. So if I try and grow them in kind of a wigwam shape, the backs wouldn't get really much sun and probably wouldn't grow many beans and all the leaf would be at the front. So I'm just growing them in this one line um, to try and avoid that problem. And I'm just tying it all up with some string. And yeah, hopefully this will be a really pretty feature of the plot this year. Unfortunately, this warmer weather has meant that the snails are back. I've not seen too many slugs yet, but it's only a matter of time. Imogen quite likes the snails though. I'm very excited for the brassicas this year. My nine star and my kalettes are both up now. Um, Isaac's been sorting out our broad beans. They've put on quite a growth spurt. So he's using this brilliant little tool. Um, I'll put a link below to fasten them to their supports. This is brilliant for little fingers, for arthritic fingers, um, or just people who don't want to tie string. Um, it's really, really handy. Outdoor sewing at this time of year can be a bit risky, but I do have a plan and I'm going to be sewing directly into these little beds that I've made. I'm sewing my ochre, um, which are these tubers. They're South American tubers. They grow really well in the UK climate, but they aren't frost tolerant. So I don't want any frost to touch them. And so I'm going to be planting them into here I'm going to make sure that they stay really well mulched and I'm going to be putting a cover over I'll show you that in a minute so I'm just planting them in and putting them on their side if they've already started sprouting and then I'm just covering them up this is the seed and cutting compost I got from um, Rocket Grow and this seems to have been really good for the seedlings that I've planted in it so far Seems like a really nice consistency. So I'm treating my ochre to it because I love the ochre and I really want it to grow well in here. So I'm using these rather dirty but still perfectly usable um, Perspex sheets. I These were, a few were left on the plot. I've acquired a few since. They're really, really handy. 
um, and I'll just put a brick on top of here to hold it down so it doesn't blow away and that will make kind of a little greenhousey sort of effect so it'll keep it nice and warm and hopefully the frost if we get any more frost which I'm sure we will do um, won't bother my ochre. I'm also direct sowing some radish these are a white icicle radish that I grew last year and the year before and they always do really well for me and they're a really large radish they're probably kind of the size of a big thumb I suppose um, and they're really tasty and not too spicy and I'm growing some perpetual spinach so I'm sowing that in here these seeds grow without really much heat um, if any heat at all and they should grow really nicely. I'll mainly use these for salad leaf. So I'm sowing them thicker than I would if I wanted individual plants. Um, depending how this goes, I might thin the plants down as time goes on and just have one or two bigger plants in here. Or I might just keep cutting them for salad leaves. So I'm just sowing those, giving them as much space as I can kind of pushing them into the ground and making sure they're all covered and then I'll just water these in and again I'll put a perspex sheet on top and a brick on top of that and that will hopefully make a lovely little growing environment and just removing a, a little branch there little twigs that had got stuck under the ground and here we are so there's the three little pots with their uh, bricks and perspex sheets over the top. I always think it's really nice to try growing something new each year and this year I'm having a go at lemongrass. So when I was at the supermarket I noticed that there was some lemongrass in the whoopsie aisle which is the discount section and these were down to just 15 pence each. So I bought them, I sliced off the very end and I put them in some water and I let them stand in that water for two weeks, after which they grew these lovely strong roots. So I've now popped them into some compost and I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to grow some lemongrass this year. I'm going to be probably growing this in a large pot and then I'll be able to move it into the polytunnel during the winter because it's not a plant that likes the frost. I saw a really good idea a couple of years ago to use these over door or over shower shelves. Um, to put by windows and grow your seedlings on in. So that's back out this year and in the porch and my cucumbers are looking lovely. The corn salad that's self-seeded is looking really good now. This is also called lamb's lettuce and it's really tasty, really soft leaf. So I'm picking that now, but I also moved some of those. I potted some up into these trays and I've decided to plant those out now because they're super hardy. So they've gone out into this little bed and they look great. And it's so lovely to see the beds planted up and looking so neat. Another South American tube that I like to grow is mashua. This is a vine plant. So you plant the tuber. It grows this incredible nasturtium leafed type vine which gets beautiful orange tubular flowers in the late autumn. The leaves, the flowers and the tubers are all edible and it hardly has any pests, so it's a brilliant plant to grow. Another brilliant tuber to grow is Yacon or Peruvian ground apple. I'm not very confident that mine from last year are going to grow back because I left them outside and even though I heavily mulched them, we have had a really bad winter. So just to be on the safe side, I've bought myself a few more. So I'm going to be planting these little kind of crowns. I don't really know what you'd call them, but the bits at the top of the plant, the top of the crown that you grow. So you can see there's kind of a little eye that you're going to grow from and some of them have started to grow a root. So I'm going to be planting those and these will produce a really beautiful leaf, sometimes yellow flowers. They're all edible too. And then the tubers in the winter and um, in the late autumn. They're amazing. They taste a little bit like a chestnut slash pear. Um, 
really tasty and they're brilliant to dehydrate and then use in stir fries. So, or curries, really, really good one to grow and really prolific too. So today was a day when we did a lot of seed sowing. So Immy and I spent a lot of time in the greenhouse having a chat. I was sowing the seeds to the allotment. She's been choosing flowers that she wants to grow and sowing the seeds for those for her little patch. Um, I'm just going to list the things that I've been sowing and list the things that Amy's been sowing. Um, and yeah, a really good day, got loads sown. So hopefully on my next visit to the plot, there'll be lots of little seedlings. So the girls did a great job getting rid of loads of the weeds in here. Um, I think they're really full now and they're ready to go home. So we just did a little bit of tidying up, um, made a few notes of what we've been doing today, had a cup of tea, and then it was time to head.
thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.